when you're standing at a table and a father and his daughter come up and they thank you because you provided a way for them to bond, that is the most overwhelmingly cool thing to hear because I don't know that that was the intention of anyone to make families grow closer, but it absolutely has. I've heard it from so many people and I'm so happy to hear it. Welcome to Let's Play by the Gamers, a podcast hosted by actress Kylie Vernoff. Fans know Kylie best as the fiery Susan Grimshaw in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Miranda Cowan in GTA 5. Our series features some of the most informed and exciting people in the gaming industry today. Kylie and our guests discuss careers, gaming, and so much more. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out the gamers.com website to hear exclusive bonus material from each of our guests. Hey everybody, you may recognize the well-known and beloved voice of this week's guest, Rob Weedoff. Rob is best known for his riveting performance as the iconic John Marston in the Red Dead Redemption series. And he also happens to be one of my favorite people to have a laugh with. We caught up with Rob on his farm in Indiana where he and his wife Taylor are raising twin boys. And this was a really fun chat, so let's get right into it. Hey Rob! <laughs> Hey, Kylie, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to me. I'm so psyched to hear your voice today. Oh, uh, well, I'm so honored and thrilled that you asked me to do it. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you for agreeing to do it. So speaking of your voice, in prepping for this call, I was listening to some of your other interviews and... um. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that your voice might be the most authentically the same as your character of the entire cast. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that may very well be. I'm, I'm so lucky, too, because of it. Because, uh, you know, I mean, we had we had a lot of lines to memorize and we had a lot of things to think about. And uh, one of the things that I didn't have to think about was changing my voice. And I'm so, so thankful for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear I don't hear any daylight between your voice and Marston's voice. Do you do you find that you get recognized sometimes for the voice? It's funny because I live in a really small town and I think that uh, you know, people people know me, but they know me because this is where I grew up. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of my friends' kids might be interested in the fact that I played John Marston. But people don't really bring it up. And when they do, they act like they're bothering me. And, and it's really kind of a weird thing. I, I would love to talk to anybody about it. Um, but whenever I travel, here's the other thing. When I travel, usually yeah. now, I announce on social media, on Instagram or something, that I'm going to whatever city I'm headed to. So I think that, um, you know, if people recognize me there, it's probably because I gave them a heads up that I was headed that way. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Right. They're on the lookout for you. I actually had a weird experience uh, just a couple nights ago. I was leaving an audition where I was auditioning to play an attorney. So I was all dolled up. I had my hair done. I had my makeup on and my winter coat on. And someone stopped me on the street and said, are you an actress? And I said, I am. And I thought, well, I just look like such an actress right now. And he <laughs> said, oh, Susan Grimshaw is such a great character. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I swear. And I said, you must recognize me from social media. And he said, no, I'm not on social media. I just, I play the game constantly. <laughs> um, I don't believe that for a second. I, I, don't, you know, well... I have to say, like, I know that I look like Susan in a lot of ways and I was so honored, but I have to say part of me is calling BS. Like I literally was looking around to see like, is Peter Blomquist hiding behind a garbage can? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I want to tell you, if someone heard your voice and if you happen to, to say, get to work or whatever, you, <laughs> then I can imagine that several people would turn their head and say, that is Susan Grimshaw. But I, you, there's, well, listen, I'm not going to call the guy a liar, but I think that um, if, there, if Susan Grimshaw looked like Kylie Vernoff, it would not be be the Susan Grimshaw that we're seeing in this game right now. I promise you that. <laughs> well, thank you. 
Uh, yeah. Although I love I love Susan, but um, I'm yet to get a scar as good as hers there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I I don't have any scars like John either. Thank God. Yeah, those are some good scars, right? From the, that's from the wolves, right? Yeah, that's right. And I want to share this too, real quickly, because you might hear throughout this interview um, a cat. <laughs> oh. I am I'm outside in the chicken coop right now. This is my uh, my little hangout spot, and it's so awesome. I'm so happy. We had a chicken coop because we had a bunch of chickens, and then eventually. We realized that we didn't we didn't want to deal with all the chickens and we weren't eating the eggs and we couldn't even give them away anymore because we had so many. We had 13 chickens and that's like 13 eggs a day. So anyway, we've had this this structure and I decided that I would turn it into uh, my Red Dead Redemption shrine. And it's so cool. Um but I want to get there. I really want to get there and see that. Or at least I hope that you will text me pictures of it when we hang up. Oh, I'll be happy to. I, I'm so proud of it. But did you if, build it? Did you build it with your own hands? I did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that part of it, maybe I shouldn't be so proud of. But what's inside <laughs> it? <laughs> what's inside it is all this stuff that's been given to me by by people from conventions, uh, fans and just it's overwhelming how cool and how talented some people are it's I am really blown great. away by by the the art i am absolutely blown away by the artwork of the fans that that i've received it is so moving to me that people spend that much time creating art based on the work we did yeah it's really great and it's it's really inspiring too i think because there a lot of these people are doing it just for fun and and a lot of it should be something they're being paid for it's really really yeah. good so i love it that people are willing to share that kind of stuff and i and i hope that those who have that talent who are afraid to share it would just understand that people are really moved by it a lot of times so please please share yeah. your talent put it out there show it to us it's really an honor i find it really an honor when people share that stuff with me i do too i love it i love it well, and so I, I just want to quickly touch back on this. The, so the cat. Oh, yeah. Cat I forgot about the cat. Okay. With me. He's, uh, <laughs> and he might scratch my face. He's not feral, but he's a mouser. Uh -huh. But I came in here and he would not, he would not leave me alone. He was hanging off the door looking in the window. So I finally just let him in because I thought. Okay, what's gonna... his name? He can be part of our chat. What's his name? His name is Waylon. <laughs> Of, of course, his name is Waylon. I, I really, if you'd given me three guesses, I might have gotten it. <laughs> a little, little Waylon Jennings cat, and he's pretty awesome, but you might hear him, and hopefully he won't scratch my face. So. All right. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that you will not get any face scratching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I know a little bit about your background, but for people who don't know, you are from the Midwest, right? That is where you grew up? Yeah, I was born in a small town. I was born same town as John Mellencamp, Seymour, Indiana. And wow. uh, there's a song that he wrote about it. You might have heard it. Uh, I, I think I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's a whole lot of corn and uh, there's a whole lot of other corn. And <laughs> there's... <laughs> It's great. It really is a great place full of a lot of really great people. And uh, I honestly, when I left here, when I went to college and then from college, I moved around. I lived in Indianapolis a little bit, Chicago and then Los Angeles for almost 10 years. I never really thought I'd make it back to Seymour, Indiana. But my wife and I decided we wanted to have kids and we didn't really have much interest in trying to raise kids in Los Angeles. Yeah. Just our our choice. Um, so we decided to come back and uh, live near my fam, my side of the family, where we could have that built-in uh, network of help. I guess. Yeah, the support. <laughs> it's so important to have to have people around you when you're raising kids. You don't even realize it until you've got the kids and you realize, I need something from the grocery store and there's nobody to help me. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's turned out to be a really great thing. My wife loves it here. 
She loves ah. it. Thank God. Oh, you know? thank God. Well, let me back up a little bit because I'd love to know what brought you out to Hollywood in the first place. Since you are such a Midwestern guy, did you know you wanted to be an actor and you went and you went there for that reason? No. Um, so I, I had a girlfriend when I was in college. And uh, when, when we graduated college, she graduated college right on time. And I graduated at the end of the summer after my senior year. So, uh, so she, right after college, moved out to Los Angeles for just three months, whatever. She, was, she had a friend that lived out there who worked for Young and the Restless. And I don't even know what she did. But she was, <laughs> I don't know if she was in casting or if she was, I don't know what she did. But so she lived with her and just had some fun living in L.A. for three months before she started her real job. And uh, and I went out to visit when I got done with school. And one of the things that we did was we were extras on Young and the Restless. <laughs> oh, and that is fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to go find that footage. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Well, so, so the funny thing about it was I got home and, and, you know, kind of forgot about it. And every now and then people would know that I did it, you know, family, friends or whatever, and say, did you really? And I'd say, yeah, I did. I don't know. We're extras. We're not, I didn't say anything. We're just sitting there in the coffee shop pretending like we were talking. And the whole thing was really weird and foreign and, but it was fun. Well, so then I got a check. And I don't know, it was for like 25 bucks or whatever. But then I thought, wait a minute, I got paid to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, long story short, I became uh, kind of famous in my hometown for being on Young and the Restless, even though I wasn't really even on. I, I guess I was. But anyway, I think because I knew at that point that my athletic career wasn't going to be my life, my mm -hmm. my lifeline. Um <laughs> wasn't going to be a professional athlete in any sport uh, that I thought, you know what, that might be fun. I might try and go be an actor. And I did. I didn't have any responsibilities other than myself. And uh, I moved to LA and gave it a shot. Amazing. I read somewhere, I heard you tell the story that when you were going for the Red Dead audition that you almost didn't go. Is that, is that a true story? That is true, and I'm so so glad I did. Obviously, but <laughs> I was uh, I was driving home. I think it was I don't know five six o'clock at night. I got called for a last minute audition, mm -hmm. and it was all the way across town. It was raining. I was in traffic in L.A. I had to go home because I had dogs. I had to go home and take care of my dogs real quick, and then get back in my car for another hour probably just to get over to the place. And if I was quick enough on my feet, I would have I would have told my agent, I can't because of this, but I couldn't come up with anything. And th there was also a part of me that that said, you know what, you moved here to be an actor. You've got an opportunity. If you don't take it, you're going to kick yourself, whether you get the part or not. You got to go. And so I went and I left and I know that any actors listening to this right now will say, yeah, this happens all the time. But it was one of those where I left and I thought that was a complete waste of my time, a complete <laughs> waste of their time. I should have not gone. I should have never gone. And lo and behold, I was wrong. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> You know, it's not the same thing, but I, I I had a little bit of hesitation about going for that audition, too. And I think mostly for me, it was because, um, you know, I don't know about your initial audition, but for this for the prequel, you know, they were so tight on the material. So it was probably a scene that had been written by casting that morning when I got there. Yeah. And and I didn't know what a video game really meant. And this scene, I was auditioning to play this. I think I think the audition scene, she was like a drunk, alcoholic mother abusing her teenage daughter, which now makes sense if you know who Susan is. Right. <laughs> At the time, I was like, what is this? And then I had that same thought. I, I thought, Kylie, you're an actor. Go act. Go act. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I don't remember what I thought when I left, but I do remember being in the room thinking, oh, they really know what they want and this is fun. Like I had a great audition experience of, of the people in the room. 
That's that's really great. I love that. I and I'm so glad that you went too. My goodness. But, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, well, it's I difficult. Think... It's it's a difficult thing to know. I mean, it was it was called the audition was for untitled video game project. So in my mind, it was it was probably gonna be a promo for a video game that had already been made. Uh-huh. Um, I had no idea I was I was auditioning for the role of, of John Marston. Or what? Even if you told me that at the time, I would have had no idea what that meant. Um, but really, I, I just thought this is going to be maybe a commercial for a video game. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so when you when you booked it, it, and and you started working on it, it's true that you and Ben Davis had had known each other. Is that right? You guys knew no. each other before. Yeah, we did. We worked at the same bar, actually. <sighs> We worked at the same bar for I don't know how long it was that we overlapped. I had worked there for a little while, and then he moved from New York to Los Angeles, and um, he started working there right about the same time where I got a bartending job. At the, at the bar where we worked, at first I was a, a busboy, basically, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I became a door host, which was definitely not my thing. I was one of those guys that stood at the rope and let people in or didn't let people in. I let everybody in. Oh, I bet you did. I cannot picture you looking at people going, you, not you, you, <laughs> just so no, not you. <laughs> you want to come in, come in, check it out. Enjoy it. That's what we're here for. I was the worst door guy in the world ever. And yeah. I would think that would just not be uh, a job to highlight your strengths. <laughs> no, no, but so, I guess the good news was I got a bartending job where I was going to make more money and I was going to be able to, I guess, uh, enjoy it more, you know, interact yeah. with people and be friendly and not be uh, a dork guy in my yeah. eyes, you know. So, no so offense. You and ben guys. worked together. At, you and Ben worked at that job, and and then did you know you you had this video game together, or did you just see him in rehearsal, or how? What was that no. like? We uh, well, so. I don't know how long we had been shooting Red Dead Redemption, but um, you know the way the way that you shoot these video games, at least through Rockstar, the way it's kind of been in my experience is you go and shoot for two weeks, and then you you don't you take at least two or three weeks away, yeah. and then maybe you come back for two or three weeks, and uh, so I don't know how many of those cycles we had been through, but one day I was I was outside. Get, they had kind of a, a green room that was outside. It was in L.A. We shot Red Dead Redemption in Los Angeles. And so because the weather is typically gorgeous. Right. They had an area, outdoor area. And uh, I walked out of there and was getting ready for my next scene. And I see this guy standing there and it's Ben. <laughs> he says, what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> And so it just, it was overwhelming and so much fun. And the odds, the likelihood of that happening is so small. Um, so they really are small. That is, I, I, I loved when that would happen when we were shooting uh, our game, when people would just show up that morning that I knew. It was just such a great surprise. And then there's this great leveling out because everyone's wearing a, a motion capture suit. So we're all sort of brought down to our barest essentials. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> let me back up a little bit. How long did you guys shoot the original game? Um, I was told that it was, it was uh, six weeks of shooting. Oh. Wow. So very, and I don't know if that's even possible, but I know, I know that it was, it was stretched out over almost a two year period. Um, but I, it may, it may very well have been possible because the, the whole thing was different. The technology was different. I mean, we still did the same kind of scenes. Um, but the way the game worked was there would be like a, a flashing X on the screen. And when you're playing the game, you knew that if you walked into that X, that would start a cut scene. And oh, so once wow. that scene started, you're in it until it's over. You can't walk out of it like you could in Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm -hmm. So 
it took a lot of the, um, I don't want to call it guesswork because at first I think they were trying different things to figure out what was going to work best. But by the end, obviously they had it all figured out and it wasn't guessing anymore, but it took all of that out of it. And when we shot Red Dead Redemption 2, there would be days where we would maybe only get two or three scenes done because they were really big scenes or whatever. Um, yeah. Even with two stages, right? Yeah, I remember uh, that. There'd be times where we were just really hammering out, especially the big group scenes. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot going on. Well, so in Red Dead Redemption, I think, I can't say what we averaged, but I would guess it was probably 12 to 15 scenes a day. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah. a completely different process. Yeah, it was just a very different thing. And it was, uh, we, we actually, for some of the bigger scenes, we would, we would rehearse for a couple of days and get all the blocking down and uh, you know, Rod would walk us through just like we did yeah. um, for Red Dead Redemption 2, but we would actually just be in our street clothes in the volume, figuring it all out because when it came down to it, it just worked faster that way. I think in Red Dead Redemption 2, the, the opportunity for so many different things to happen maybe didn't make it rehearsing wasn't the best idea right you never know yeah. what you're gonna get and, and a lot of times you can accidentally do something genius so i i found it so freeing i have to say i found that whole process as an actor so freeing that really we got to just play you know we're in these motion capture suits and we don't have to worry about really i mean we might have to worry about walking into a tent or you know but but not walking out of our shot because the cameras were everywhere. I really yeah. felt like sometimes there would just be magic that would happen, you know? Yeah, I think so too. And, and, you know, you, you're not, it's not you. It's definitely not you. Your yeah. character does not look like you. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, well, I don't know. Some guy on the street might disagree with you, but yeah, I want to talk to that guy. <laughs> I want to know that guy's name, but no, I, I think that just the fact of, uh, you know, it's it's you're providing the performance capture for this character, but you don't have to worry about looking cool or you don't have to worry about, you know, does, yeah. is to this my right to angle? Sit, to not have to worry about my hair falling in my eye or, you know, the, the making sure my purse is on the right side or you know, all that stuff that was just so freeing. I found it to be so much fun. Plus, they just cast the heck out of it. Every actor that walked on that set I thought was amazing. I really did too. It was so entertaining and, and it was such a pleasure to work with so many people and, you know, to be paid to do it is almost unfair. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really, it, is it was unfair. such a great well, experience. Tell me about actually the decision for you to come back, because as you said, you know, you, you had done this game. Had it already come out when you guys decided to move back to Indiana? Yeah, well, so we finished Red Dead Redemption, mm -hmm. and uh, then we moved back to Indiana, and it probably wasn't even a month after I had actually lived in Indiana that I got a call from Rockstar saying, we're going to do a DLC for the game, so you got more work. And I said, that's awesome, but I don't live in L.A. anymore. I moved. And they said, no, that's great. That's fine. We're going to do it in New York. So... <laughs> So oh, so was go, that Undead Nightmare? That was Undead Nightmare, yeah. Ah, oh, so you had come back to New York for that. <laughs> so you, I mean, it, this is kind of an anomaly for an actor to, you know, become this iconic character, have all this success and say, actually, what's really important to me is to move back to Indiana and raise my kids there. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... Um, you know, for me, like I said, I, I didn't grow up my entire life wanting to be an actor. I didn't take a lot of classes. Um, yeah. I did take classes, but I didn't. It wasn't something that I went to school for. It was something that I thought, I'm going to see what happens because why not? And at wow. that time of my life, that was the choice that I was able to make. And I, I thought, you know what, I'm doing it. So um, now, you know, now everything's very different. And yeah. I, just now, so now I feel the same way as as I did before, where I think I am not actively searching for more work. 
I'm not. And, and that is a job in itself, I think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it really is, yeah. So I'm not doing that. And I'm not mad about the process. I have no hard feeling. I'm not, I got nothing but great experiences and uh, a whole lot of great memories. But right now, I think that it's, it's – I am more interested in – being a good husband and a good dad. And if I'm traveling, I'm not yeah. that, I'm not that. And yeah. I'm yeah. I mean, I think about a DLC being one thing, but when they called you for the prequel, I'm sure that you and your wife Taylor must have had a really big decision to make there for how much time that, did they tell you how much time the commitment was or no? They, well, so they didn't know. Um, but they said that, it wasn't likely to be very long because my character was not the playable character. So it wasn't going to be like it was last time where in every single scene of red dead redemption, I, I was in the scene. I had to be because of the way that the, the technology worked. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, I guess there there probably were things that were shot that I wasn't part of. Just like, I mean, shoot for Red Dead Redemption 2. They, they traveled all over the world capturing people doing different things. So I can't say that every single scene, but they made it clear you're not the playable character. Um, and we'd love to have you back. And my wife knew how much I would enjoy it. So she was such a really, really great teammate. Yeah, she must have had to really move to mountains to make that schedule work because your boys, I think, were toddlers when we started the that game, weren't they? Yeah, they were two. Oh. <laughs> they were two years old, twin boys. And uh, yeah, my wife is an angel. And she's also, I don't know how she does it, but she, well, she loves kids. She loves them. She actually babysits kids now. That's what she does. And uh, she'll have sometimes five or six kids at different ages running around our house and I'll walk in, I'll get off work and I'll walk in, I'll turn around and walk right back. Out. <laughs> right to the chicken coop. You're like, uh, no... I got something to do in the chicken coop. <laughs> yeah. There's no way I can't do it. I cannot be in here right now. She loves it. She's great at it. So, well, here's a little side note, but I'm just a huge fan of your wife. So, uh, I just think she's, awesome and a badass and so much fun to be around so and i'm also oh, thank you you're, you're welcome i mean good job marrying that one really well done <laughs> thank you yeah i agree thank you and i'm so glad that you guys decided that you would come to do the sequel because i i have to say you were there my first day and i was so uh lost for lack of a better word and you were just so kind and supportive and you know, you and, and Roger, I think, was there that day. And you just, you guys gave me so much confidence just to get out there and play. You really um, were so welcoming. So, well, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad that you felt that way. And I think that we learned that, um, you know, this is something that's very different for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you learn that a lot of people have never done it before. So um, to make people comfortable obviously is the first thing that you want to do, but it was also, it was, it was our knowledge that that was going to make the day better for everyone, but it was also just the vibe of the whole place. I mean, you remember it wasn't just the green room that was having fun. It was the, everyone on, on stage was having fun too. All the, all of the animators and they were all really cool. Happy. Yes. The camera team, the the sound team, I mean, from top to bottom, they really gave us an environment that was uh, fun. It was fun, and we were all out there playing, which, you know, I mean, how lucky are we to just be out there doing that, really? Yeah, I, and I know. And I think it's... everybody felt that way. I agree. I mean, if you didn't enjoy it, it was absolutely your own fault, because it was, <laughs> <laughs> and I think everyone probably did. I mean, really, yeah. it was great environment really, yeah. really cool. if you're not having fun there there's something wrong with you go find another job for sure yeah right <laughs> <laughs> well you may not be out there looking for more acting work but you have been getting out and meeting some of the fans right you've gotten to meet fans all over the world yeah 
And it's, has it surprised you how many of the gaming fans are women? Honestly, yes. I guess now, you know, the more I'm around fans, the, the less I, I guess I even think about it. But I, I found, and this is what I love the absolute most about any kind of feedback from this game and, and any, any kind of awards and anything else it's won. And, and I very much appreciate all that. But when you're standing at a table and a father and his daughter come up or a a son and his mom come up and they thank you because you provided a way for them to bond together. Yeah. That they didn't maybe have before. That is the most overwhelmingly cool thing to hear because I don't know that that was the intention of anyone to, to make families grow closer when this game was being made, but it absolutely has. I've heard it from so many people and I'm so happy to hear it. So I, I, I really, really love it that we were part of something that, that not only was so successful, but has, has really changed a lot of people's homes it's, in yeah. a positive way. It's really yep. cool. Um, so wh- how are you finding social media? I know that that's sort of new to you. And it seems to me that you are having more fun with it than anybody. Yeah, well, okay, so... <laughs> I'd, I, I'm 43 years old. I played a really cool character in a video game, and I've enjoyed every second of, of everything going on with that. But me, myself, I'm a 43-year-old dad, uh-huh. <laughs> right? So uh-huh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to try to be cool because nobody's buying that. I'm not going to try to uh, – basically, I guess what I'm trying to do is uh, I want people to know who I am and and i'm i'm absolutely willing to embarrass myself or be silly or whatever to i guess i guess let other people know it's okay to be that way you don't always yeah. have to be uh trying to put on some kind of a a show for people it's okay yeah. to just be yourself i mean it's just okay it's absolutely okay and so I probably go overboard. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think so. I uh, honestly, this is my opinion: is that you are a terrific example of of being yourself and being inclusive. And you know, I see you as um, as just being authentically yourself. And yeah, like you say, not trying to put something on. I also have noticed with you that I think that you are what people these days are calling an upstander. That when you've seen somebody make negative comments that rather than being a bystander, that you take a moment to, to say, you know, who are we to judge? And, and I think you're setting a terrific example that way. Well, I think it's important. Um, you know, we all, we, we all are in the same fight, right? We all want, we all think that we want things. We think that we want to, to whatever it is that we think we want, right? We want a new car. We want a new house. We want the nicest clothes and we want to be the cool popular person and we want this and that and whatever. But really, I believe we all want to, we all want to be loved and, and not loved more than anyone else, but we all just want to know that we're loved and that we're included and that we are accepted. You can have a new car. That's great. Take the new car, drive it for two weeks enjoy it and then you're going to want a different new car that's, <laughs> that's so nature, true right? yeah but so you can have all these things they're not going to make you happy what's going to make you happy is to be loved and included and accepted and i think that if we can all just realize that and know that it takes nothing away from us to share that with other people it actually makes us feel better if we could all just do that for each other and for ourselves, the world would be such a better place. And I want that for everyone. I want both sides of that for everyone. I know I, you call me whatever. No, you're actually, you made me cry a little bit. I just think it's really beautiful. And I'm so glad that you're saying it because I think that our listeners are going to get a lot from that. You know, that, that, that the best way to feel loved and supported is to uh, lead by example and uh, include everyone. Well, 
And you know, the other thing too is um, we're not the judge. None of us are. None of us are the judge. So a lot of people are going to have, you know, different thoughts about this and that and whatever. And that's fine. You know, I guess, you know, everybody's, everybody's got opinions about everything. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think as long as we're, we're not hurting anyone, we don't all know everything. We don't understand everything. Just we're not the judge. We're not the ones who make the rules and we're not the ones who give the final decisions on any of, <laughs> any of right. the things we discussed. So uh, if we could all keep that in mind too, we could probably brighten people's day a little bit, not be so hard on each other, not be so hard on ourselves. Uh, can't, you can't take yourself so seriously. You're just going to upset yourself. The more you do it, the more you're going to be bummed out. Just Yeah. Uh, Right. Just, I try to tell myself that every day. Don't take yourself so seriously. And also it doesn't cost anything to be kind, right? It doesn't cost us anything to be kind. So why not? Yeah. I mean, really, why not? I just read something on Reddit this morning, actually. I love Reddit. It said something along the lines, I'm going to, I'm going to wreck this, but it was about, um, if you, if you are kind to someone or if you're kind to one person, you may not change the whole world, but if you are kind to one person, you might change the world for that person. I, I know that I probably just butchered that, but you get the point, right? Yeah, I get the point. Yeah. Just, you don't I know mean, who yeah. might need it. You just don't know who might really need it that day. No, you don't know. And it doesn't take anything away from you. If it does anything, it makes you happy yourself. And we all have insecurities and we all have, we all, I don't care who you are. We all have insecurities and we all need to lighten up on ourselves and lighten up on other people. We're all doing this together and we should be teammates instead of trying to one up each other all the time. We'd all be happier. Yep. Yep. Oh, man. Well, uh, this has been incredibly awesome. And as I am wrapping up here, I am hoping I could hit you up with a question that I like to ask all our guests. All, all right. right. Are we ready? So, yeah. um, it, so since, since this gamers platform is all about community and lifting each other up, like we were just talking about, and I know that you and I know that we can't accomplish anything in isolation or in a vacuum. Um, right. <laughs> we need each other. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping you could tell me about a time in your life or in your career when someone recognized something in you that was special and just gave you an opportunity to shine. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, there's one obvious answer. <laughs> uh, yes. I, yeah. And it, I, you know what? That is the obvious answer. That is absolutely the obvious answer. And I, I could not be more to Rockstar and Rod Edge, who fought for me to get the role of John Marston. I certainly could never repay him for that. Not even close. But so to, to say something, I'll just say something different just for the sake of saying something different. Um, I, when, I, when I wanted to get an agent in L.A., when I first moved to L.A., I thought, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody said, do extra work. And I thought, okay, yeah. I get it. I'll do that. I'll do that. I've done it. <laughs> right. I've done it. And I will be happy to do that. I'll learn on set how things work and I'll be an extra. And so when I started doing extra work, which I did for like five or six months, um, a, a lot of it, um, I learned a lot. And one of the things that I learned from a lot of the other extras that I would see, you know, day in and day out doing this stuff was that you cannot get an agent unless you are SAG eligible. And so I really wanted to find a way to get these SAG vouchers. And you could get them as an extra. You needed three. I was able to get two. And I don't even know how I got them. They upgraded me to uh, something. I don't know what it was called. But anyway, I was playing the game and I thought, I just need one more. And I wasn't getting it. And I wasn't getting it. And I was frustrated. And I, I finally said to myself, you know what? You may be right, all you people telling me that 
I can't get an agent unless I'm SAG eligible, but I'm going to go to an agency and I'm going to make them tell me no, because there's a chance that you're wrong and they yeah. might just give me a shot. And thank God I did that. I went and read for an agent and they said, are you SAG? Are you what, what's your status on Screen Actors Guild? And I said, no, I'm not. I know I should, probably should be. And if I'm wasting your time, I apologize. And went through, I said, I wanted you to tell me no. And they didn't tell me no. They said, we, we do want to take you on. And we'll get you your voucher. We'll get you SAG eligible. We'll book stuff. So I think that uh, it's important to know that if you tell yourself the answer is no, with something like that, yeah. something that you're interested in and you say, yeah, I can't because of this, and that, whatever. If you tell yourself the answer is no, you're right. It is no. But if you make someone else tell you the answer is no, they may not tell you no. So don't be afraid to try. I am so inspired by that. I can't even tell you. I... I really needed to hear that today myself, and I think other people will too. That that was really, really a great story, right? If you tell yourself that the answer is no, the answer is, of course, no. Yeah, stop. Just stop thinking about it, because you're right. The answer is no. But if you, if you say, you know what, I'm going to try, and I'm going to see what happens, you might get what you're after. you got to try. Don't be afraid to go after what you want. Yes. <laughs> yes well on that note Rob I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me today and it's been so much fun Kylie I really really appreciate you asking me to, to talk with you and I've enjoyed every second of it always a great time That was so much fun. If you'd like to learn more about what Rob is up to, you can follow him on Instagram at Rob underscore Weedoff. That's W-I-E-T-H-O-F-F. -F. And if you love Rob's iconic voice as much as we do, you can also find him on Cameo.com. Thank you for listening. Let's Play was brought to you by The Gamers, a community that connects all gamers who identify as women and welcomes people of all genders who support this. Let's Play was co-produced by Kylie Vernoff, Jenny Grossa, and the Gamers team, Laura Deutsch, Rebecca Dixon, Heather Awida, and me, Verna Maloney. Please visit thegamers.com for show notes, to access exclusive bonus material, and to learn more about the Gamers community. And if you liked what you heard, we'd so appreciate it if you subscribed and gave us a five-star review. Thanks again for listening.